Well, when you start up uh, your car this morning, you might have noticed some frost on your windshield or on the ground, depending on where you live. Yeah, CBS 17 Storm Team meteorologist Rachel Dunsing explains what we need to get frost and why some woke up with it on the grounds and others didn't. It was a chilly one Monday morning, so let's check in with some local temperatures as observed by the sensors at the airports. Some of us managed to drop all the way into the low 30s, like Siler City and Sanford being two of those locations. Roanoke Rapids fell into the upper 30s, while Rocky Mount, Raleigh, and Fayetteville managed to stay in the 40s, but just barely. The temperatures tell enough of a story of why some of us experienced patchy frost and others did not. But let's take a little more time to talk about what we even need to get frost. So the first thing, we need clear skies and light winds. After a breezy weekend, early this morning the winds did finally calm down and sky stayed clear all through the night. We also need moisture in the air as well as some on the ground. Our cold front did bring us in cooler and drier air, but there was still enough moisture around as well as left over from Friday's rain to help in the development of that patchy frost. But the most important thing, temperatures in the 30s, specifically the low to mid 30s. Some of us clearly had that this morning while others didn't. These conditions are expected to remain in place tonight, meaning frost is again possible for those of us who drop into the 30s. And that's also why there is now a frost advisory out for a good portion of Central North Carolina. If you have sensitive plants, it's never a bad idea to bring them in or even cover them with a light sheet or cloth just in case. On average, our first frost usually happens this week, but remember, it all depends on the factors we just talked about. In the studio, meteorologist Rachel Dunsing, CBS 17.